Pick it up where we left off. We talked about the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, the difference between the two. One dissolves, one does not. So homogeneous does or does not dissolve? Does dissolve. Uh, heterogeneous means different. You could see two different things. So that one does not. Um, just in case you missed it yesterday, a good example, and one of the examples I always go to is homogeneous would be salt water. You can see, I mean, you can't see the salt dissolve in the water. Uh, and sand water, or sand and water, would be heterogeneous because you can see the sand and the water. Uh, that's really a really good example. That's not up there, but it's a good example. So, now we got to do some thinking. Let's go more to a quantitative rather than qualitative side of this uh, unit. Ask yourself this, and if you already know the answer, shh, because it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, I already know. Yeah, I know y'all know. Uh, which one weighs more, one kilogram of cotton or one kilogram of lead? What do you think? Same. Trick question. It, they are the same. One kilogram equals one kilogram. Congratulations. Your parents were right about you. You are smart. Uh, and yeah, it is, it's, you would think. But what you're thinking of whenever you see cotton versus lead, automatically your brain goes straight to density. Uh, and that's what we're going to look at here. Now, if I were to ask you now which one's more dense, you're going to say the lead, okay? So well, you can't just use grams on this. You're gonna need something else. You're gonna need uh, the volume also to figure it out. That's one reason why we talked about the mass and the volume yesterday. Volume is how much space that's being taken, or how much space is available. Mass is how much matter is taking up that space. You need to know both of these things to actually figure out this part. So density, and this is where it gets, uh, this is, I'm going to try to, uh, you, you should have heard some of this back whenever, you know, you were younger, but obviously it's been a while. Every single Chem 101 class starts with density because everything actually kind of goes around that. Other things that we will talk about later uh, is going to come back to density. So density is a property that measures basically the compactness. You need to think when you see this word, compact. Anyway, it is, uh, it is the ratio per mass per volume. So when we do that, we get our little formula that we see here. Uh, you get density is equal to mass over volume. Mass, which is measured in grams, and volume, which is measured in, usually, milliliters. We talked about that yesterday. So then what are the units for density? Well, let me ask you this. What are the units for speed? Miles, Miles per hour, right? So miles, whoops, that's a distance, okay? We use to measure distance with miles. Um, and you said miles per hour. Hour is time, distance over time. So if you go 70 miles per hour, you will cover 70 miles in one hour. That's what that means. Density is exactly the same way. There's no one unit for this. There are actually two. It's a per thing. Uh, it is actually going to be grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cubed. But that's written on the board over here or right there. Uh, so speed, uh, now I'm telling you the units, or not the units, but the, uh, the idea is the same. But uh, the, the uh, speed and density are not equal to each other, so don't think that. Somebody actually started asking me that last year. Um, usually the units are going to be grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cubed. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I've had this speech with you yet. In chemistry, we don't have naked units or naked numbers. Okay? Naked numbers is like that. What's wrong with the number eight here? It doesn't have a unit. This could be eight grams, eight milliliters, eight grams per milliliter. It could be eight Snickers. We don't know. So do realize on this next part and everything you do in chemistry, if it don't have a unit, full credit, count it off. So density of water, for example, is going to use usually around one gram per milliliter. That's actually what density is based on is water. A lot of things are based on water because, well, it covers most of the planet. Um, but on actuality, uh, density is temperature dependent. So there's many ways to actually memorize the formula. We're going to talk about the formula a little bit more here in a second. But giving you an idea of density, everything separates in the density. Uh, 
So for example, if you mix different things in a uh, water solution, they'll separate out to their density of how compact the molecules are. There's food color and put into some of these things to make it kind of so you can see the levels, but you can see like difference between solid objects versus um, liquid solutions. Uh, so we have to kind of pour them in in the right order uh, otherwise, they'll switch between layers and mix up and then you get just nothing but a bleh. But you could actually do this at home. You can take honey and if you put it in first before the water, it, the water will sit on top, the honey will sit on the bottom until you stir it. And when you stir it, yeah, that just messes everything up. Uh, same thing with rubbing alcohol. Alcohol is a little bit lighter, so it's going to be a little bit more higher up. Oil, obviously, it's going to stay on top. It has a less density than water. That's one problem that we have when we have an oil spill or something like that it goes to the top of the water. It does not go underneath. Uh, that affects the, uh, most of the uh, animals in the ocean on top. Um, anyway, any questions there? You can actually do this. Um, I would, please tell me y'all got to do this in biology. Y'all didn't, oh God, that is, y'all didn't get to make the rainbow? Oh, we'll see one day, maybe we'll do it. Uh, for example though, gases obviously are less compact Therefore, and most gases are. So Saturn, for example, is actually very, very uh, light. It's a gas giant. You do know you can't land on the planet Saturn, right? Yeah, well, not really. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and this is one reason Pluto was demoted because he didn't fit the trend of the gas giants. He's on the outside. Uh, even Uranus is full of gas. Um, <laughs> had to be done. Uh, Neptune, uh, all those guys are gas giants. This means they're very, very light. So if, if you could fit Saturn in a bowl, which you can't because it's way bigger, um, it would actually float because it's nothing but a big ball of gas. So now, how to memorize this formula? Now obviously, you'll, you know, this is the only formula on the test you're going to have to deal with. In future tests, you're going to have to deal with a lot more formulas. That's going to get crazy. Uh, but this one, you're actually going to have to know. Density, and I always, I love doing this story. Um, if you ever dated somebody, uh, if you date somebody who's very dense, they're going to break your heart. And that's actually a good way of remembering this. Uh, mass over volume looks like a heart. Um, so that is a formula, which means you can rearrange it to solve for missing values. If you look back at your algebra class, they give you, I don't know, A squared plus B squared gives you C squared. Okay? They'll give you A and B and they say solve for C. You'll be doing that in here, except not with the square, just with this formula. So if I gave you mass and volume, you could tell me the density. If I gave you density and volume, you could tell me the mass. If I gave you the density and the mass, you could tell me the volume. You'll have to do rearrangements of the formula just like that. There's only three possibilities, which makes it a little bit easier for you. Whee! So, let's see how uh, clever you all. Um, a piece of clay, all right? It has a mass of eight grams. A volume of four centimeters cubed, or four milli... By the way, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. Centimeters cubed is the same thing as saying milliliters. So if you get sick of seeing centimeters cubed, change it to milliliters. That's what I did. Uh, I just, for some reason, that's just too much information I have to deal with one little letter. But uh, it's the same thing. So anyway, uh, eight divided by four is what? Two. Two, okay. However, I chop that piece of clay in half, I take, which means, therefore, I have half the mass, I have half the volume, okay? But what remains the same? Density. Um, as you can see right here, four divided by, or eight divided by four, or four divided by two, it's gonna give you the same number. Which tells you something here. No matter how big it is, the density is going to remain the same. You could chop it, slice it, dice it, no matter which piece you have, you, that will give you the same density as before. We use this a way of identifying compounds, and that's how we first started identifying certain metals on the periodic table. They all have a particular density. Uh, so, this is very important, the little quote at the bottom, density does not depend on the size of the object. It depends on the identity. So gold will always have a specific density. It will not be anything else. Water will have a specific density. Iron will. That's how we identify certain ones, or that's how you can do it. It's called using the Merck Index. Um, but that book's very, very big, and now y'all have Google, and you don't have to really look it up. You can just Google it. So you can actually Google any element on the periodic table. They'll tell you the density. Uh, that's great, because we could use it to identify things, no matter how big or how small it is. Nice.
By the way, that was a really good test question. So how to measure uh, mass and volume. To determine mass, we use a balance, not a scale. Please don't say scale. Scales are on fish and also in your bathroom. So please don't use the word scale. Uh, balances measure grams, scales measure weight. We're not measuring weight in here. Um, Got to culture you out a little bit, even though, yes, we'll still some, never mind. Just do that one thing for me, we'll be fine. All right, number, uh, the second one, to determine the volume of regular solids, shapes, we use the fo uh, following formulas. I got some good news for you. The only one you really got to know is the box. The other two are really meant for uh, AP Chem. Because um, we're not going to determine the size of a uh, atom and all that other kind of stuff. You can, uh, but you would use this little formula, the sphere formula. Cylinder, eh, that's really meant for gases, and we're not going to really worry about the volume of trying to figure that out. So we can find a volume of regular solids, which is great, by using the shapes. So if we actually had something the shape of a box, we could do length times width times height. That's how they get the centimeters cubed, by the way. Um, so for example, if I have a box that is one centimeter times one centimeter, in other words, the uh, length is one centimeter, the width is one centimeter, and just for craps and giggles, the height is one centimeter. Okay, so this is actually a good review here. Uh, one times one times one. One, okay. But do we just say centimeter? centimeters. Centimeters cubed. So do remember whenever, and this is a quick reference back to units in case uh, you've missed out on some of that. Whenever you have units, when you multiply, you're basically adding the superscript or the power of, of that unit. So you have one, two, three, you should have cubed, okay? If you divide, what do you think you're gonna do? Subtract. Subtract. Or, and that's actually how we are able to cancel out units and everything in uh, the density form we're gonna be using. But anyway, one centimeter cubed, just so happened, is exactly the same thing as one milliliter. So when you go in there in the lab and I say, get me five milliliters of water, you're actually getting me also five centimeters cubed of water. They're identical. So don't be scared when you see that. If this scares you, just drop it, put milliliters. I won't count off, okay? I'll just be happy that you have a unit of volume. Trust me, even if I mean, they're identical, they'll be the same. But can you say one centimeter cubed equals one liter? No, that would be incorrect. Okay, to determine the volume of regular solids, we use the water displacement method, and we're gonna talk about that. That's actually stuff you're gonna be doing tomorrow in the lab. Uh, to determine the volume of liquids, we use a graduated cylinder, and y'all already know how to use that thing. So a balance, it looks like it is. Okay, that's not a scale, that's a balance. So Archimedes, I'm gonna talk about Archimedes real fast. Um, actually, uh, this guy is one reason that he has a really good story, it's a funny story. But what he figured out basically was that with irregular shaped objects, you can just submerge it in a liquid which fills up the space which obviously space has to do with volume. And so it's a method that we use in here. They call it Archimedes principle. I'm gonna call it the water displacement method. Uh, so if you don't have a object that has a regular shape, and when I say regular shape, like a box or like a ball, uh, that's a regular shape. It, this is a regular shape. It looks like it fits in a box, but there's still small nooks and crannies that you can't just quite get just right. You can get an idea of the volume, but you can't get it just right. Um, so what you would have to do is submerge this in water to actually get its volume. Now, however, this is electronic. I would suggest not doing that. So the initial volume, you got to know the beginning volume of an object. And also here's the trick. A lot of people mess up on this. They don't submerge the irregular shaped object in the water. It has to be completely submerged. So if you want to figure out your volume, you need to completely submerge yourself underwater. Okay. That obviously don't stay under there, but you get the idea. Uh, so, for example, if we did this, you know the volume before, you put the rock in completely submersed, it rises up to 265. What is the volume of the rock? 65. 65. Okay. Now, do keep this in mind. I have this problem with students all the time because your math class, when I say find the difference of something, it's always final, the ending, minus the initial. What you did last versus what you did first. That will give you a positive number. If you get a negative number, just drop the sign, okay? 
I got a negative number, and that's not an extra choice, huh? And I'm like, why do you sound like Mickey Mouse, first off? And <laughs> drop, this, drop the sign. Anyway, so uh, this is a not, not a little joke right here. It's like, he may be graduated, he's a graduated cylinder, but I have many degrees. Thermometer, get it, uh, degrees. Uh, all right, I ain't gonna impress y'all. Um, so what y'all gonna have to deal with tomorrow, and this is actually a rundown how to handle your lab. So pay very close attention. Um, what is the total volume of this flask? Uh, what, what is the total volume of the flask it can hold if filled directly to the top? Notice I do say on here, the volume written on the flask is not the answer. Up to uh, 200, 400, eight, 600, 800, 1,000. That's up to this. I'm saying let's fill this guy all the way to the top. How are you going to figure out that volume? No. Fill it up to a thousand yeah, and add something to it and whatever makes you go to the top. Okay. Um, so, yeah, a lot of y'all are thinking uh, fill up to the top, pour it out, get that measurement that was in there, um, or start uh, measuring little bits and put it in every single time. That's what you were saying, right? Yeah. Um, so, what if I told you there is actually uh, there's an issue with those? Whenever you pour out water, is there some water drop still stuck in the bottle? That's one of the problems. That skews the data a little bit. We want to get the whole volume perfectly. So, what could we do? Um, well, we're talking about density, right? So, what you could do is fill it all the way up to the top, get its mass, obviously get the mass of the flask also, and uh, plug it into the density formula. So let's take a look at our density formula. We're trying to find what? Volume, mass, or density? Volume. Volume, okay. So let's take a look at our density formula. Density equals mass over volume, okay. We're trying to find that, which means that one's blank. We need a mass and we need a density. When we plug those in, we can solve for the missing guy. So when we rearrange the problem, obviously, y'all know how to rearrange formulas. Multiply this on both sides. Uh, but anyway, we're trying to get volume, so we need our mass and we need uh, the density. Now here's the thing, you cannot put this mass in there. Because this is the mass of the water, yes, but what else? They're still in the uh, flask too. The flask too. Mm -hmm. So together, that's the mass of both of those. We need just the mass of the water. Why just the water? Because the water's taking up the space inside. It's filling all the nooks and crannies. We're getting a full 100% there. So what we do, we take the mass of the flask before we add water, the mass after, subtract the two, and we get just the mass of the water. So we have that guy. He's right here. Boop. The mass, you put it on that balance thing. Yes, using the balance. Uh, so water, of, uh, water is a liquid which takes up the volume of the container. So by knowing the mass and the density, we can solve for the volume of the container. Explanation point. Oh wait, I probably should have said that a little bit more exciting. Anyway, actually room temperature water is about 25 degrees C. That's actually about right now, like the room temperature of the air. So uh, I did tell you all temperature is, uh, or density is dependent. Obviously if you heat it up or if you freeze it, the density is going to change. Why do you think ice floats in water? It's becoming less dense. It's the only liquid on, the, again, water is the only one that can actually do that. If you did it with iron or something like that, obviously it's going to sink. Um, so in reality, if we actually increase it a little bit, but on average, density of water is about one gram per milliliter. If you took that number and rounded to a whole number, that's going to be one, right? Okay, well, if I did that, that would, you wouldn't see a really good point of the math here. So we're going to use this whole number right here. That is the density. That has to be given to you if you can't find it. So we have to obviously look that up. And yeah, that's, that'll be the density y'all are going to be using tomorrow, by the way. Also on your pre-lab. So, grams per milliliter. So we have both of our numbers. And you should have your calculators out. What is 1047 divided by 0.997? It should be very close to this number, but it shouldn't be exact. 1,050.2. Was that what you got? 1.15. Let's do 1.5. Just to be safe. Now, what is the unit? Let's take a look. 
You took grams and divided it by grams per milliliter. Which unit cancels out? Grams. So it's just milliliters. It's milliliters volume? Yeah. Boop. There it is. Don't worry, you're going to have more practice later. Um, so, if you have the mass of water, and this is just me recapping, uh, which is usually found, which obviously you had to subtract the two, uh, and you have the density of water, which is usually looked up or given to you in the problem, you use the formula for density, okay? We rearrange the formula and you end up getting mass over density, doing that whole little, just showing the long way of figuring it all out. Um, and so therefore you just plug and play. Now you could just plug it back in the original density problem, but then you're going to have to do the same kind of rearrangement altogether. So rearrange formula to uh, rearrange the formula to solve for volume, which I, that was the last little thing at the bottom. Uh, plug in your values, just like we did on the board. We've got 1047 for the mass, which is in grams, um, and for the density we have grams per milliliter. That's the units for that. Grams divided by grams, grams cancel out. You're left in just milliliters. And notice I put like approximate 1050, even though you did the math just now and it was 1050.15. Uh, approximate value is about 1050. I rounded it to a hole, which you're not supposed to do. I just did that for simplicity purposes. So what that tells you though, how much more volume at the top of that uh, flask is there? About 50 milliliters. So why is that actually important? You'll see tomorrow. Because what if we started trying to use that to find the density of other objects? So the volume is uh, not equal to the volume written on the flask. So don't always assume that, especially on a flask. There's always that little bit of uh, extra oomph that gets in there. And there's always some space issues. So I told you I'd give you a little bit of a trick for those of you who are you know, not so familiar with formulas. Um, the little triangle that you see up there, you can write that down and actually try to use that if you're actually having trouble. I think it does handicap you a little bit, but uh, you know, whatever gets you there. Um, so uh, could you use the uh, solve for the mass of the water if you knew the volume instead? Yes. All you had to do is just rearrange it, but that was like the second step I did on rearranging. So here's a little trick. If you draw this formula, mass, density, volume, just like this, give me something to solve for. Mass, density, or volume? Volume. volume. You cover up the volume, there's your formula, mass over density. Why does that handicap you? Because you're not really knowing the formula and you're not really getting the math. But, you know, it's a good visual trick. Um, let's say you're solving for density. Cover up the D, mass over volume. Solving for mass, density times volume. That's the big difference between all those. Some people wrote that down and they actually use it, but then, like I said, it doesn't really teach you the formula. It just is one of those little tricks that you can try to use. But you know, whatever helps you sleep at night. All right, let's make a key. All right, so number one. Let me see if I get this. All right, there it is. Okay, so number one, the blank of an object does uh, does not, the blank of an object does not affect its density? Oh, okay, I was like, I, I wanted to say is not affected by the density, it's the same difference. Um, so what is it? Size. Size. Yes, that's a good test question. Uh, number two, the volume for density, I'm sorry, the formula for density is mass divided by volume. And if you remember, density, mass over volume. I only gave you two choices there. I didn't want to mess with you too much. Uh, number three, uh, a dime is placed into a graduated cylinder containing 25 milliliters of water. So what's in there before? 25 milliliters. Okay. So we got a, a regular graduated cylinder that has 25 milliliters of water in it. All right. So I'm going to put this down initial. All right, let me put initial V. I'm sorry if it looks weird. Uh, so that's 25 milliliters. After the dime was placed in, uh, or dropped into the cylinder, the volume rose to 29 milliliters. So what is the final volume? God, my handwriting sucks. Final volume. There we go. Uh, so it was 29, right? Okay. What is the volume of the dime? So when you subtract the difference between the two, the dime is going to be 4, because 25 
Obviously, this should be first, minus 25. Sorry, I bumped it. That would be 4 milliliters. Okay? Look very closely for what they're looking for. They're wanting volume of a certain object. Okay? Neither one of these gave you all the volume of that object. This was the volume with the water, with the graduated cylinder and the dime. This is just the volume of the water. Subtract the two and you get left over just the dime. In fact, that's a lot of what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, number four, what is the density of a paper clip with the mass of two grams and the volume of 0.5? Well, we go back to our density formula, right? Density is mass over volume. Yay. Which one's mass? Two. Two, two what? Uh, okay. Two grams. Okay, and what's the volume? 0 0.5 milliliters. Y'all could have done this one in your head. What's the answer? Four what? Grams per milliliter, so which would be a, oh, I forgot to do this one up here. My bad. So a lot of it has to do with interpretation. It's a very good beginner. So that's why they start with density because it's only one formula. All right, number five. This is where it gets fun. A piece of metal has a density of 1.3 grams per milliliter. If you're ever lost, what I usually do is I start writing down units and what the values are. So I know my density is 1.3 grams per milliliter. This is how I visualize things. And the volume is 5 milliliters. Okay? They want to know what the mass is. Okay? So here's the thing, you got that little formula that we looked at earlier. Uh, so density, I'm just going to rearrange it for fun, just again, mass over volume. Okay, we need mass by itself, so how do we get mass by itself? There you go. That cancels out, and we get the M equals dV. So all your, oh, I'm sorry, D, yeah, dV, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, so all you're doing is actually just taking these two values right here and multiply. And so when you do so, this is it all worked out. Just for, you know, explanation purposes. I like to put parentheses. It's, yeah. So when you do multiply these across, do realize that is grams over milliliters. So the milliliters will cancel out. And you just multiply two, and then you get nothing but grams. What is the answer? 6.5 grams which is, hey. uh, but okay. think about it real, extrapolate a little bit here. A cube of aluminum, okay, and I'm just going to get you started. Uh, a cube of aluminum has a mass of 500 grams. Okay. What will the mass of a cube of magnesium have of the same dimensions? If they have the same dimensions, they're going to have the same what? Mass, volume, or density? Volume. Volume. So, we already know from this, their volume is the same, okay? But they didn't tell you what the volume is. So, you need to find the volume of 500 grams of aluminum before you can do anything else. So, when I do this, I always kind of, let me uh, rearrange this here. You have 500 grams of aluminum. We're trying to find magnesium. So, you have the mass, you have the volume, and you have the density. I like doing a little chart. And if what I would do is, I, if I were y'all, you know that these guys are going to be equal right here. Because they're going to have the same dimensions. So before you can work out magnesium, you've got to fill out all the rest for aluminum. Well, where can you find the density of aluminum? <gasps> da, 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 da. Aluminum! Density is 2.7. Does everybody see where I got that? So you do the whole little solve for volume thing. And if you look on the front of your paper, it actually has it, just in case you don't want to look it up. Volume over density. So you're going to take these two, divide it. That gives you this value, which then is also going to be the value for here. Um, however, you'll be left with volume here. You're trying to find the mass. Do you already know the density of magnesium? It's on the chart, too. Right here. So go ahead and put that in, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Mercury? I have the mercury. My bad. Uh, yeah, where can I see it? Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. I pointed to the wrong one. I 
I just like mercury better. So that's why I'm giving you a chart for that a little bit to get you started. That one, I can admit, trying to figure it out can be is mean. It is mean. <laughs> 